Well, hello there, Internet. Today I want to um, talk for a little bit about immigration because it seems to be a topic that nobody wants to talk about because of all the labeling and name calling and so on and so forth. And uh, as a result of that, there doesn't seem to be any, there's not enough thought or consideration being given to it, in my opinion. Um, now, um, the first thing I wanted to say is that obviously there are lots of um, people from different countries and the ones that I have met so far are really lovely, intelligent people. Um, there are, you know, very capable individuals, um, generally speaking, very independent um, and contribute a great deal to our society. So let's get that out of the way, first of all. But let's just ask ourselves a question about those people for a moment, because they are, if you like, the capable set from their social uh, communities back home. Um, for every one of them, like all families, they will have mothers and fathers, grandparents, aunties and uncles, sisters and brothers. Um, they'll be from families in their home countries, whether that, wherever that country be. Um, and so those people that make that effort to migrate to a different country, they're usually the most upwardly mobile, they're usually the most capable, even in the case of situations like Syria, which is, you know, terribly harrowing, or the refugee crisis coming from the Middle East, and of course right across the Middle East, uh, from all different countries. But once again, when you look at the people, you see the, the videos on the TV, and what you are looking at is the most capable set of that society, the most able people, those with the most intelligence, those with the most capabilities, that are leaving their communities en masse, and migrating here into Europe. So what does that mean overall? I mean, yes, the political arguments are that they come to our country and other countries of Europe and they contribute a great deal to our society. Yes, that's probably true. Um, they also require services and infrastructure and they have dependencies that, are, that we need to make provision for. But what does that mean for their communities back home? Well, let me tell you what that means, because I helped back in 2000 at the turn of the century. I helped work for two years with an organisation called the Christian Response to Eastern Europe. And uh, what that team of people were doing from here in the southwest was dealing with the um, social and economic uh, collapse in Moldova. And uh, what had happened in Moldova was almost precisely what we are seeing from the Middle Eastern countries and other areas. The upwardly mobile, capable people were enticed by um, the growth of uh, opportunities in Russia and other Eastern European countries, and they simply up sticks and left. And uh, for every one of them that left, they left behind mothers and fathers, grandparents, children, and so on and so forth. And the people that left were the engineers, the producers, the teachers, the people that were capable. Um, and what happened was that the communities in Moldova just utterly collapsed. Um, the tractors were left in the fields, uh, you know, no, but the agriculture almost ceased, the school systems collapsed, uh, there were orphans and elderly people, um, the place was left absolutely destitute. There was no, you know, no, no real war or conflict or things like that, it was simply in the main economic migration. Um, and what ended up happening there is, is that those people migrated um, into the other countries where they had dependencies and requirements which um, you know, basically placed load on those resources. But the worst situation about it was trying to then get the schools reignited, trying to get computers together, trying to get network systems together. And this was our skills and I worked with me and my company at the time um, to work with the Christian Response Group um, to try to ship out computers and provide infrastructure for schools and so on and so forth to resolve that. So what we ended up doing was creating just a really difficult situation um, that was hard to cope with. It's certainly something that we should be thinking about. But also, more importantly, actually, it represents for us, if we take this thinking and approach it in a different way, it creates a really great opportunity for Britain and the UK on the global stage 
to show our real cultural values, to demonstrate our humanity and to show the people that are labelling us and calling people names and, and, and saying all of these things, to show those people that actually they're wrong. There's a much better approach and I'm going to cover that in another video which I'll upload shortly. So um, if you get a chance, please subscribe, do comment, let me know what your thoughts are, what you think about what I've just said and watch out for that UK Opportunity video coming shortly. I'm Rick Timmis, I'll see you soon.